Now, I would like to welcome Mr. Mikael Schödin to take the floor. Mikael Schödin is a professor of computer science at Mellor Dalen University, and he will present the project Serendipity, Secure and Dependable Platforms for Autonomy. In uh, this project, the team tries to take a combined approach to cybersecurity, functional safety, and system dependability. Yes, thank you. Right, so here, here we have the project name again. Uh, what may, might be missing, but I guess was, was everybody here understands that we talk about computer platforms. Uh, I would also like to say that this is, we're thinking about platform from a design perspective. So we also include requirements, capture and modeling and validation things. So it's not only the runtime platform that we are working on in, the, in this project. Uh, the type of systems that we are looking at, I hope you can see it fairly far down here, are autonomous, connected, uh, heterogeneous, time-sensitive, cyber-physical systems, or systems of systems. And you have some examples here uh, on the slide. We are in particular having partners from Volvo Construction Equipment and uh, Saab. And we also have some other um, companies that have joined us for the, along the ride, but those were part of the initial application. So the background that we have here, uh, in the intro introduction when it was mentioned, we tried to combine functional safety and dependability and security. We are actually a bunch of researchers that have background in dependable systems. Uh, before this project started, we, we, we couldn't call ourselves security researchers, really. So we work a lot with redundancy and fault tolerance, self-monitoring, different kind of validation and verification techniques. And uh, we had the hypothesis that we could address security and safety in a uniform manner based on these techniques or features that we have in the dependable systems. Uh, in short, you could say that uh, we think that dependability is really the ability to survive unintentional faults. Something happens in the environment, something happens in your equipment, you have a bug or something breaks, you should handle that, then you are a dependable system. Uh, whereas security could be seen as you should be able to handle intentional faults. Someone is causing a fault to your system. You get, you get a denial of service attack or some other type of attack. So while I think when we started this, it was some years ago, this view of seeing things was quite new. I think today more and more people are working along these lines, uh, saying that safety and security are, are tightly intertwined. Um, but uh, when we started, this was kind of new way of thinking. Uh, for those of you who haven't worked in, in safety critical systems or safety, you could, you could think that if we, if we think about safety and dependability, uh, or at least the safety part of dependability means that a safe system is a system that doesn't cause harm to its environment. It doesn't hurt people, it doesn't break equipment or things like that that are outside of the system. Whereas security can be seen that the system should not be harmed by the environment. So if you have malicious or uh, uh, individuals or attackers in the environment, the system should be robust against that. So we have been doing this project for quite some years now, so I will just shortly go into some of the highlights. Uh, we have, of course, a whole bunch of papers, 50, 60, 70 papers, uh, but they are around a few central themes, and some of the highlights, uh, or from a scientific point of view, uh, I, I will go through three of them now. So it's basically on the requirements level, on the design level, uh, and some of the runtime platform parts. So an ontology for safety and security. Uh, this might sound, if you, if you haven't worked a lot with, with sort of requirements capture, you, you may not know what this is. But I think all here knows some of the keywords here. You have vulnerability, you have attacks, you have threats, you have assets that you want to protect. 
Most people here that work with security know how these concepts relate to each other. If you have been in the safety environment, uh, safety engineering, then you know about uh, hazards, you know about risks, you know about f faults, uh, those kind of concepts and how those relate to each other. But if you try to be get these two worlds to get together, then it beca doesn't become obviously immediately how uh, an, an uh, attack relates to a threat that could relate to a hazard uh, that could then have uh, some kind of serious event. So we have developed an ontology that help the system designers to figure this out in a structured way. How, how are these concepts related to each other? Uh, both on the sort of ontology level, but then you can have a tool that helps you to relate these concepts when you are doing requirements uh, licitation for your system. So that's the whole idea, to, to get, uh, at the end of the day, a nice set of requirements for your system, that if these systems are, the requirements are fulfilled, you should be able to develop a both a secure and safe system. And when you do that, in, in, you typically would do modeling of your system, those models can, be, uh, can then include both the system that you're developing, they should include the environment that, uh, the, that you want to control, and it, we can also extend these models with models of attackers, uh, different attack vectors and things like that. So then we can take these models and analyze them in the design stage to find potential problems uh, in the model. Maybe we can improve on that and, and get rid of some of the vulnerabilities in the model but what some may remain. And then we have this runtime thing, which we call a tiny twin, which is basically synthesized from the sort of larger model of attackers, the system and the environment. And the digital, tiny digital twin, it's tiny, so it's, it's not the full model. Uh, it monitors uh, the process and tracks the, no sort of the expected behavior or an envelope of the expected behavior the loud behavior. And it can listen to input and output from the con controller from the plant, and it can also uh, drop faulty commands. If we detect that some command here is, is due to some potential attack, uh, then, then, we, then we can, for safety reasons, drop commands. And uh, if, if, even if some commands are sort of allowed, we, we think that there's some suspicious thing going on, but it's not a safety threat, we can give a report um, to the system operator that there might be some attack uh, ongoing or things like that. Um, so, yes. And this particular uh, work is presented out here also in, in a poster uh, with our student, Fredion, which, which is also here. In, so you can, you can talk to him more if you want some details on this part uh, later on. There. And then when it comes to the part of the runtime platform that we sort of have highlighted, we have uh, investigated a technique which we call friendly jamming, which is a scenario with, with wireless communication. And the problem here is if you have a, someone that listens in, in on your wireless network, um, you have an eavesdropper, uh, he could potentially learn about your communication patterns and thus target a denial of service attack to maybe one of the nodes in your system. Um, for instance, by just listening in, who, who communicates with who? You don't need to listen in to what is being said, but you can listen in who communicates to who and when. So we have developed a technique which we call friendly jamming. So you have some guy here that is part of our good guys that sends out jamming signals, which are known to all the guys in our network. So they can filter out the jamming signal. But the idea is that the eavesdropper should not be able to filter out the jamming signal. Uh, and that would prevent him to learn about the patterns. Uh, we can also actually use this jamming signal to, to prevent uh, listening. To, this, this can be a bit tuned, this uh, jamming signal to sort of both prevent sort of, uh, access in, in time, but also to enhance the security of the communication itself. There. Okay. So that's pretty much all I wanted to say about the key results. We have one uh, 
ongoing uh, commercialization project or utilization project. This is an SS SSF project, and those of you who have worked in that, you know that there's a, a sat size of the budget that is used for utilization. So we are working with a, a new startup company called Brighter Gates to develop some of the other stuff that we have into a commercial platform uh, for threat detection and monitoring of anomalous traffic in IoT networks. That's all. <laughs>